All right, guys. So real quick today, what I'm going to show you is how to make use out of your knobs on your Akai MPK Mini MK2. Um, and also how to make use of your modulation wheels. In my case, we have the joystick, which has the pitch and modulation inside of one control where your one axis is for pitch bending and the other axis going up and down would be for modulation. And I'm just going to show you how you can make use of both of these functions on your MIDI controllers. Um, again, I'm using the MPK Mini MK2 in my example, uh, but what I'm about to show you should really work for any MIDI controller that you have. Um, so why don't you guys check it out and hopefully you, you can get an increase in your workflow and an increase in your creativity. So let's get into it. So real quick, before we get into FL Studio, I just wanted to show you the template that I'm using and I'm going to have that template inside of the description below um, in this video. Um, I have another video where I explain what the pads are doing in my template. This video today is going to focus on the joystick and going to focus on these control knobs on the right hand side. So I'm going to do a get, which is going to pull my settings from my controller that I have plugged into my computer. So let's do a get again and boom, I have, there you go. So I just want to mainly, mainly point to the fact that the joystick has an X axis, which is a pitch bend. X axis would be going from left to right. So if I was to move it all the way left, it will pull my pitch down, move it right, it will pull my pitch up. The Y axis going up and down is assigned to, uh, I think is, this is a control channel or command control one. And this is the Y axis. So whenever I move it up and down, uh, that's going to control whatever I have assigned to my modulation wheel inside of FL Studio. So again, a lot of controllers have two separate wheels, one for pitch bend and a second wheel for modulation. On the MPK Mini MK2, it has both of those functions inside of one joystick where the X axis controls the pitch and the Y axis up and down controls the modulation wheel, depending on what VST you're in that modulation wheel is going to do different things. And again, this template is going to be included in the description below, um, as well as the, the previous video that I did explaining how I have my pads assigned to trigger channel one, channel two, and channel three, and so forth and so on. So check it out. Make sure you close out the mini MK editor before you open FL Studio, or else FL Studio won't be able to recognize your controller because only one program can recognize your controller at a time. So I'm going to open up this project that I was working on earlier today. Um, let's just start out with Omnisphere and let me just kind of show you how this works in Omnisphere. So in Omnisphere, I have a boys choir and solos wheel um, selected. I want to go to layer A and for my modulation, I'm going to hit the modulation down arrow and I'm going to assign wheel to a proverb mix. So this is going to going to control the level, the mix level uh, for the proverb effect inside of Omnisphere. As you can see, the source is the wheel. That, that means my modulation wheel. Um, and the target is the proverb mix. OK, it's a layer effect, as you can see here. And this is specific to Omnisphere, but you're going to have similar controls inside of any VST. If you can see here again, the wheel is assigned there. So I'm going to play a sound and I'm going to move my wheel to the left and the right, and you're going to hear the pitch change. So you hear that? I'm going to go up and then I'm going to go down with my pitch. So going from left to right on the joystick. I'm sorry, I'm, go I'm going from right to left. So once again, listen. So you can kind of hear it. You got to listen closely. If you don't have on headphones, you might want to put some of those on to make sure you can hear the differences. Now I'm going to go up and down on my Y axis. The previous um, pitch bending was going left and right on the X axis. So now I'm going to go up and down on the Y axis and you can hear the verb, the proverb mix level is going to be increased and decreased. That's down. That's up. That's down. That's up. This is neutral. So if you listen closely, you can kind of hear, hear it change. And this is just one example, guys. Your modulation wheel can be assigned to a lot of stuff. That's why even here, you know, I want my modulation wheel. Boom, my modulation wheel 
to control any of these options. I can control an oscillator. I can control a filter, a cutoff filter. I can control amplitude, panning. I can control a lot of stuff with this modulation wheel. Arpeggiating, I can control the length, the swing, and sweep of an arpeggiator effect. So the modulation wheel is really meant to customize, is really meant to be customizable. So it doesn't, it doesn't do just one thing. It's just another control knob from your MIDI controller. And that's how you can use the modulation wheel with Omnisphere, for example. Now let me show you how to use the knobs on the right hand side of your controller to assign it to whatever you want to assign it to. So let me just play my beat some and then let you guys kind of see what I do. So I have this, this sample assigned to channel six. I'm gonna solo that channel, let you hear it. I'm gonna throw on a parametric EQ2. So that just shows you how I do that manually. So now let me actually assign this to control knob one where I want my frequency knob to change as I turn knob one on my MIDI controller. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply right click on the parameter that I wanna change. In this case, I wanna change the frequency that my high roll off is, okay? Right click, link to controller. Auto detect is selected here. You're gonna leave that selected and then what you're gonna do is, you're gonna simply turn knob one. Voila. It automatically learns that knob one is what I wanna to use to control my band seven high shelf. Roll off, roll on. So if I'm playing my beat and I'm doing something live and I'm recording this, as a matter of fact, let me arm for recording and let me do it for you. So I did that and I did it in pattern two. Um, and what you're gonna see is that it actually created, uh, if I go back here, you can see here in the background of pattern two, um, well, you can see here in the background of pattern two with the, it created the modulation where I was playing with the wheel. So I dropped it down and kind of gradually lifted it back up. All right, so check it out. And it's gonna do it automatically now, now that I actually recorded that. So there you go, I assigned knob one to the, the high shelf frequency band. And when I hit record, I have, if you right click, I have automation set to be recorded as well. When I have the recording on, make sure this is checked or, or it won't work. So you just right click on recording, the recording button and you make sure that automation is selected and then it will automatically record any automation changes during uh, a recorded, a recorded uh, loop. And that's basically how you use time one. And you can assign that to anything, guys, because I could have assigned that to. So let me just assign this to knob two. I'm going to just randomly select channel 11 and I'm going to fade the, the volume of this channel up and down. So right click on the volume knob, link to controller, and I'm going to use knob two in this case. So I'm going to just turn knob two. Boom. It automatically picks up knob two and I can control that fader with knob two. And if I hit record and I change this knob and I move it, it's going to record that automation because I have the automation 
um, set to record up here at right click. All right, guys. I mean, that's pretty much it. And you can do that with with um with any any faders that can do it with this link to controller. Anything you can right click on and link to controller, you can link it to one of those knobs. Okay. And that's basically how you use the modulation knob, the Y axis on the joystick. And that's how you use your knobs on the right hand side to control uh, whatever you want to control in FL Studio. I hope this was helpful, guys. And uh, leave a comment, leave questions. Please like and subscribe. This like the video and subscribe um, if you look forward to more videos. Peace out, guys.